<laughs> Let's talk about Hamza Youssef, the speech hate crime, the, his new Absolutely. hate crime laws. And uh, basically, uh, they're getting the police up there are getting 2,000 complaints a day, a lot of them from jocks just having a laugh. Compla You'll get one in for saying jock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so what is that, what is that Alex Phillips call uh, uh, Scottish trans women? Jocks in frocks. Uh, oh, but uh, it, it's, it's Scott, Scott's having a laugh. We're disassociating ourselves <laughs> yeah. for legal and other purposes. <laughs> it, no, so it's... it's it's, a lot of them is Scots having a laugh. But interestingly, uh, and they're, they're obviously testing this. Yes, they're absolutely. trying to show to Hamza Youssef, look what you've done. You've done something really silly here. Uh, and it turns out that there are more complaints about Hamza Youssef's uh, 2020 speech, in which he said he was sick of being the only non-white person in the room. A lot of people said it was a racist speech. There have been more complaints about this on the new hate law front than they have about J.K. Rowling calling trans women blokes. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is the law of unintended consequences, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. My highlight of the day is the Scottish minister going going on, and uh, I better not do the accent, that's a hate crime, <laughs> uh, but saying, oh, people are making vexatious complaints. Yeah. People are making... <laughs> no, Sherlock. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know... You do... don't say! Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It didn't take a genius to work out this was going to happen. Now, I suspect it will settle down, but you're absolutely going to say, if you, if, you, if you open a floodgate, you're going to get a flood. Um, and if you make it, you know, this easy, that, I mean, if you, can, you make it, you can go into a garden centre or the sex shop in Glasgow. I hope we're going to get re figures released for which of the non-police reporting centres is getting the most complaints. I reckon it might be the Glasgow <laughs> uh, sex shop. Um, uh, but the, uh, then you're going to end up uh, with this situation. It's why, I look, I think that, you know, tackling hate crime and tackling hateful abuse is very important. I think this law is so sort of broadly and badly driven that it's, uh, that, that, that you're going to end up with, you know, uh, this sort of issue where people from one side to the other make a complaint. Well, can I defend Hamza Youssef, because actually... No, no, you, <laughs> no. May, no you may not. <laughs> he told uh, BBC Scotland News today, those new offences that have been created by the Act have a very high threshold for criminality. Uh, so it doesn't deal with people just being offended or upset or insulted. So, actually, people can keep on calling up and, and putting in yeah. these, these vivacious ones, but for proper, actual... Yeah. Uh, Proper bad tweets. The problem is, though, is That's that okay. it, it, yeah, is, is that because the police are just going to be swa swamped with these calls because of the way they've done this with these, particularly I think, with these non-police. Uh, uh, so you don't have to go to a police station, you don't ring the police, you can ring the helpline, or you can pop into one of these locations like a golf club or the aforementioned sex shop. Uh, I think that that means that you, they're just going to swamp the police and it's going to take away focus from real hate crime incidents, which is hugely important to tackle. Uh, what worries me is up in Scotland, this is getting me in trouble, but you know, you're never going to be allowed to go. Scotland you again. go up to somebody and say, You're a trans woman. He says, No, this is a kilt. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I'm just a joke, folks. Now. I'm That's I just a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, no, but I think, I think it's a sinister law and it's, it's a big mistake on Hamza Yusuf. I mean, it would be right. hilarious if Hamza Yusuf ended up being well prosecuted and not J.K. Rowling. I think neither will be. So I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for Hamza Yusuf. Uh, now, uh, here's a, a disconcerting story. Judges have been urged to uh, look at softer sentences for deprived criminals. So these are people who come from deprived or difficult backgrounds, the contention being that they get less time in jail or le a lesser sentence than someone from a middle class or a comfortable background. That uh, sounds a bit wrong. A crime is a crime. If you break the law, uh, you should be uh, sentenced accordingly, not uh, to do with your background, surely. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it, on, on paper it sounds uh, uh, pretty objectionable because everybody should be treated equally under the law. That's the first principle of the law, uh, first principle of the US Constitution, isn't it, or, or right up there. Um, I think the issue here is here common sense. So we, we we know we're shoplifting, that if somebody's clearly kind of starving and they're sticking, you know, a, you know, a, a block of, you know, one loaf of, 50p loaf of bread under their, uh, under their jacket, then people, the police tend to use common sense versus people, criminal gangs clearing the shelves of vodka. Yeah. I mean, you know, th there's a kind of common sense way of taking into account circumstances, uh, but sort of, do, uh, if it's going to be an online kind of test of how deprived are you, how, how are they going to test it? If it's a it? golden yeah, rule, then have, that's wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have to put your tax return in when you're uh, <laughs> alongside your sentencing report? I don't know. Well, Ben, if, I don't know if you remember this, but a little while ago, there was a thing called affluenza, where judges were saying <laughs> to kids who are from affluent backgrounds, oh, no, no, we can't put you in jail for stabbing your boyfriend because you don't know any better. You've been growing up so affluently, you don't know the reaction, and we want to make sure you have a good future. The pendulum has now swung <laughs> the other way. Yeah. Well, I mean, as Matthew so sensibly put it, you know, everyone should be equal in the eyes of the law. It doesn't matter what your socioeconomic, ethnic, or other background is, or whatever your ideological beliefs are. If you break the law, you should be prosecuted. And I think one of the problems that we've had in this country is 
the dumbing down of the criminal justice system by creating carve outs for specific issues. For example, you know, the two words petty crime undermine policing. They undermine the judicial system because there's no such thing as petty crime. Crime is crime. Yeah. I know Matthew drew a, a comparison between clearing out all the shelves of vodka and steaming a loaf of bread. But, you know, crime is a crime and there's nothing is victimless. If people go and shoplift, what happens is prices go up for everyone eventually. And we've got to take a much more rigorous and blind approach, which is the traditional way to uh, adjudicate, a blind approach to justice. If you commit a crime, you will pay the price. People need to know that. That is the only way for the judicial system, the criminal justice system to work.